Yeah, the big. Yeah. He's dead now. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do the, um, the still life directly in front of me. And um, I've got it set up somewhat similar to what you're going to be doing with your homework in the sense that I've got two um, peppers on there and I've got the uh, carton. But um, like with any other, uh, any other drawing, I'm going to start first with the underdrawing. And uh, if it takes a while to do it, I think like I was saying yesterday, then it'll take a while to get the underdrawing. But I want, don't want to rush through to anything. So I'm going to start with that one pepper on the side that's at an angle. And immediately go over to the far side of the setup to where the top of the, the lid's coming in into that oval-like shape for the pepper. And the carton, even though it has a lot of intricate changes in it, it's basically a long rectangular box, essentially. So I'm sort of thinking about it like that in the beginning. And I'm thinking about the pepper is that it's a shape leaning in a very specific angular direction. referencing all of the peaks that are inside of the carton, basically they're all lining up with one another. So this straight line in my underdrawing is referencing how they fall in line, generally speaking, with everything else. And like with any other drawing, I'm drawing pretty light, you know, e easy, um, easy to erase when I find that things aren't working. But I'm also moving relatively quickly around the setup in the sense that within the first, you know, 20 to 30 seconds, I want to have some type of reference to the whole setup. Not necessarily every object in there, but some reference to all the big elements that I'm going to be dealing with. I can always work back through an area and later on in the underdrawing if I don't feel that it's clear enough. Right now, I really haven't measured anything. I'm just seeing what are my basic shapes, how do they seem to run into one another. see these curving shapes and the curving shapes that I'm doing in the pepper I'm more uh, more than worrying about getting a perfect curve I'm trying to reference where this pepper generally changes from the top uh, um, end of it towards the side loosely reference some of those peaks on the inside and um, make sure that you pay attention to how many of these uh, peaks you might have on the carton you're drawing. Um, try not to just draw them randomly. I did that once when I was in a figure drawing class. I had, my assignment was I had to draw my foot and I turned the drawing in and I thought I did okay with it and then the teacher looked at it and goes, let me see your foot. And I was like, oh, all right. And he's like, do you have six toes? Oh, because I was paying attention. I was looking at one toe at a time rather than the whole line of the toes together as a whole. So when you're looking at these peaks in your egg carton, think about them as one big mass and go back and forth so you get a good idea of exactly how many you have. You don't want to end up with too many or too few because then you have problems later on when you're looking for reference points to uh, measure from. I'm still basically at the underdrawing stage. All right. So I'd say that's probably enough of an underdrawing to start with. So what should I do from here? I forgot. Height and width. Height and width, yeah. So I'm going to think about from the end of this pepper to the far left all the way to the end of the actual top of the egg carton, which is a little bit past the, the red pepper to the far right against this highest, longest um, area in terms of height. So and clearly, without even measuring, I can tell that the width is much longer than the height. So I'm going to see how many times the height fits into the width. So one, two, about two and a quarter. So one, two, 
two. And I've got roughly two and a quarter coming in. So my height and width is okay for right now. Maybe I'll shave that in just a touch. So now that I know that I, I, I know how far how far high, how high up to go, how far down to go, to the right, to the left. I know that everything's going to be within generally this realm. I'm not going to go off the page now. So I have to think about what are some very noticeable landmarks, some points of overlap, some major turning points and forms, and kind of start to compare them to one another to start to solidify the overall big shape a little bit. And like with any other drawing, I'm going to think about what are parts, what are areas that are far apart from one another. So let's say this high point on the pepper, which is a small highlight coming in, that is far away from, say, the point of the pepper on this side where it's touching the tabletop. And it has a very specific diagonal relationship. And if I go straight down from that highlight, I'd see the bottom of the uh, egg carton, and then I could do from the bottom of the egg carton over to the bottom of that pepper, and I'd have a triangulation of three solid points, and I would also clarify my uh, height and width. So, from that highlight straight down, I'm just a hair to the right of the end of this um, one holder for uh, the egg that's in the, around the corner. And in the beginning, feel free to leave the light measurement marks in. They can kind of be used as a guide. So I can tell this needs to come over just a little bit more. It's right before that vertical line. So that same point against where the pepper hits the tabletop. And sometimes I do this to hold my stick uh, straight to the page because I want to avoid pushing my um, stick like this and then getting a distortion. So if I think on my stick's doing that, I'll just go flat back to my page and slowly bring it up and turn it until I get the angle I'm looking for. So the end of that pepper needs to fall somewhere around there. So I'm close. Now I need to take that same point and compare it to this one. So those three are working okay. Now another major one would be the end of the pepper here, which I could do against, say, that point. So again, I'm thinking of points that are far away from one another. That way I keep my mind focused on the whole mass. Avoid the tendency to get stuck in one area too soon. There's going to be the end of the pepper. And here, there is a really important overlap point where the pepper is being is overlapping what I can see of the lid. And in reference to what some of you were drawing yesterday, where the box top was getting tilted like it was going up too high, I'm going to look at that one pretty this overlap point pretty early on because that'll help me go into the right track to get the perspective of that lid accurate, and I won't end up flipping it in the wrong direction. So maybe this point against the overlap point this highlight spot that I found earlier against that same overlap point. I'll start to get in line to get the top and I'll also by default start to clarify a little bit about the size of um, the pepper. So it needs to come in just a tiny bit. Right to there. Close. Now there's another major turning point here with this corner where the egg carton hits here, that overlap spot I saw there. So maybe 
in the early stages so you don't get kind of lost, take a, an assessment of some major uh, landmarks that you could use and just make quick marks in them on your underdrawing. That'll be reference as a point you want to measure against. That way you won't get uh, confused on well, what, what should I look at. So let's say this corner. Overlap point to here. And remember, you can draw right through the forms in, the, in, this, uh, in this stage. I can always erase that line later, but at least I know this point and this point will be believable in the sense that they um, connect with one another. Like I said, don't think that you have to necessarily measure at the speed that I'm measuring at. If you do this drawing and you're still looking for those three initial uh, spots, that's fine if you're 20 minutes later still on that, that area. Don't try to progress ahead if you're unsure about um, some of the basics that you already have down. So from here, here's my corner for the one side, here's the corner for the other side. I now know the starting point to measure some of the rest of the angles of that top. right where one of the divisions this perhaps comes in. It's the angle of the side of the pepper as it leans against the egg carton. This is where it hits the ground so I know where to begin the angle for the top or the top that's close to the tabletop, I should say. And as I put together the shape of the pepper, I'm measuring the shapes just like I would measure a proportion. In other words, I see this curve, but I'm finding what direction that curve, ta uh, the change that it takes by basically measuring the angular change. I can put in the roundedness a little bit later on. All of those peaks go in that subtle angle down towards the pepper. And remember to periodically go back and check some of your earlier measurements. So every now and again, I'm going to go back and check that these first three spots are still right because as I move ahead in the drawing and develop other areas, maybe I accidentally move one of those three points and I don't realize it. So I want to make sure that I'm always keeping things in line the way they need to be. And I think um, after these first couple of days, you guys probably already have realized this, but the key to um, getting a solid drawing it's basically involves the same thing if you want to do anything productive in life, it's patience. And how many people in here have patience? Like, be honest if you don't. Most people don't. Drawing will teach you patience. I did not always have patience.
my first uh, painting assignment when I was a beginning, uh, when I was a freshman in painting one, like two or three days before it was due, it was like 12 o'clock at night, and I was having a drawing problem in the painting. I couldn't get some of the shapes to work. So being the immature freshman, and it felt really good for a split second. I took the painting off of the, can off of the easel that was in my apartment, and I just broke the thing over my leg. And for like three seconds, it felt so good, because I hated that painting. I was screwing up everything. I went and I threw it in the dumpster and I was like, yeah! And then I realized, well, it's still due in three days. So now I've got to start over. What I should have done is just taken a break and not touched it for a while. But, so, like, like I said in some of the other classes, don't uh, get too discouraged if you're frustrated with your drawing. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. In fact, if you're not frustrated with your drawing after an hour or two, that would be odd. Most people are. So. So I've got the end right here. And rather than going from this cup to this one to this one, I'm going to jump over to here and go back and forth. That way I make sure both sides um, uh, relate properly to one another. Because if I start going in this one at a time kind of idea, I might end up with more or too many cups or not enough, and it, then it won't, it won't work, uh, work out properly. So. And notice I'm still holding the pencil in the same manner that I did when I started the underdrawing. I'm not really ready to get into to those tiny little detailed curves yet. And if you have to, when you're making straight lines, there's nothing wrong with making the, um, taking the measurement with your stick, bringing the stick down, and using your stick as a straight edge. I mean, at this point, I um, am used to making straight lines just uh, without using a ruler. But if you have to use your stick or a ruler to make a straight line, I'm, I'm fine with that. As long as the shape is measured out correctly, then you know, using a ruler or a straight edge is okay. And as far as how to make a straight line, I think I talked about this with a few people um, yesterday. But notice when I make a straight line, I'm drawing with my shoulder. I'm not doing you know, this with my wrist or my elbow. I'm keeping my wrist and my elbow pretty uh, locked and just my shoulder is moving. And also, every time I take a measurement, I take the measurement, I apply what I've seen and I stop and kind of make sure that it's going right, and then I go back to making another mark. I'm trying to be very um, calculated with every decision I'm making. And if you're at this stage and some of your underdrawing, some areas that you've corrected, some of it's still showing through and getting in your way, there's nothing wrong with erasing some of the earlier lines if they're becoming a distraction. Just make sure that you don't erase something that's just been corrected and kind of throw, uh, throw yourself off in terms of your calculations. And there's this opening right here on the carton. And because it's very prominently a rectangle, it's very easy to want to draw it like that. But if I look really close, the top of that egg carton 
is at a slight angle to me. Therefore, that opening that's going to come in here is not going to be parallel to me. It's going to be moving at an angle like that. So make sure to not take anything for granted. Don't assume anything about any area you're drawing. Always analyze it. Because if you get the, the top of the egg carton accurate, but then this opening gets a little bit skewed, that, that's when you can fall into those situations where it looks like your drawing is more off than it actually is. So. Take a break here in a minute. What time is it? I think I said this the first day, but believe it or not, with, with enough patience, drawing actually becomes fun. I know right now it seems like incredible torture. Pepper blocked in, and then we'll take a, take a quick break. So basically, every time I'm unsure about something, every time I'm not 100% sure that it's something is at this type of an angle or, or that type of an angle, I measure it. I don't want to guess at anything. I want every decision I make to be, I want to feel pretty solid about each decision. Right along here, there's a, there's a few highlights that are coming in along the top of that pepper. Those highlights are there because there's a major turn in the form. It's going from top to side. So these highlights on the inside are coming up because there's all, it's almost like the corner of a box. So I'm referencing it right now and measuring off of it. So later on in the drawing, when I go to do those curves of each of those sections, I'll know exactly where the top changes to the side. a quick break and then we'll come back. Are there any questions up to this point? This is essentially what you're going to be doing for your homework. Uh, setting up uh, an egg carton and two vegetables. The only difference uh, with your homework is that one of the um, uh, vegetables you have up there, I want you to cut it in half and put both halves into the still life. All right. 
So we'll take a quick break and then I'll come back and kind of work this up a little bit more and then we'll start doing... Um So the first thing I do after coming back from a break is I kind of take another quick check of some of the earlier measurements that I did so I know, one, that I'm still in the same position of my subject, and um, two, that have I skewed anything and not realized it. So make sure. If you're going in the right direction, everything should still be lined up. If it's not, then let's say I get to this point and I find the pepper, uh, this overlap point and this point, they're not working based on where I'm at, then I'll just change it. So don't think just because you measured something three or four times that you, know, you can't change it. Maybe you made a mistake and didn't realize it when you measured earlier. So always keep yourself open to adjustment. Um, I mean, I wouldn't make it much farther away than what we have in class, so four or five feet is probably fine. I w at the same time, I wouldn't make it to where it's like that close to you, like a foot away from you, you know. Um, you don't want to have it on the other side of the room, obviously, you know? unless you've got really, really, like, perfect, flawless vision. And sometimes, like a minute ago, I resharpened uh, this pencil. Sometimes uh, some of your problems that might be coming into a drawing could be something based on the fact that maybe your pencil is as, as too dull. So remember to stop and uh, sharpen your pencil periodically. And if you find yourself moving a certain area of your drawing, you redraw it like five, six, seven times, there's nothing wrong with that. I was telling somebody yesterday, there's a, a documentary um, out on uh, Rembrandt. And a lot of people consider the painting The Night Watch to be one of his greatest paintings. And when they x-rayed that painting, there's a figure in the foreground where the figure's arm is very foreshortened to the viewer. When they x-rayed the painting, they found that Rembrandt had to redraw that foreshortened arm like eight times because he just wasn't getting the foreshortening right. And this was Rembrandt, one of the greatest drawers, painters of all time. So if he could screw up like that on what's considered one of his greatest masterpieces, it's okay if you spend ten times re erasing and redrawing and erasing and redrawing in certain areas. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. Some uh, shapes just more time consuming to get solid than others. So, you know, that kind of just comes with the territory of drawing and painting. You got to do a lot of uh, correction. little um, turns right here where the form comes up. I notice that all of them are on the same straight line as well. So every shape, I'm seeing how does it align, especially when I have a, an object that's very geometric like this egg carton.
and like I say, in this area, I'm looking for general direction of a shape and clarity of the placement before I worry about the curves that are coming in. The curves that I would put in are more of a refinement issue than they are an issue of um, perfection of the whole structure. The direction of the curve is more important first. Side of that pepper, there's that turning point where it goes from top to side. There's the stem coming out. And even though I'm not drawing the light and the shadow, I can use it use light and shadow as a guide to see the structure. In other words, on this side of the pepper, I can tell there's a little bit of reflected light coming in, and the reflected light is making a shape that comes up and then over. So logically, that must mean that the side of the pepper is going up and over. Otherwise, that shape of reflecting light wouldn't be there like that. And everything, like I say, is still basically straight line segment at this point. And right along here I see a few highlights similar to what's happening with this pepper. It's the difference between the top and the side. Now that I have the proportion, the placement, the general direction of the shape, now I can kind of go in and start to refine some of the uh, forms more clearly. And sometimes if you find yourself being a little too heavy handed, um, what, I'll, what I'll do if I have my proportions right, and I know my shape is generally structurally where it needs to be, but I need to refine still, but the lines are kind of dark, I'll take the kneaded eraser and I'll skim over my drawing, not so much to erase the drawing, but to lighten it up a little bit so I can go back in and make the refinements. So I'm just skimming to take a little bit of that dark, uh, dark line out so it doesn't become a distraction. I, I want to make sure that I don't erase the measurements, though, that I've, uh, that I've been doing. This could actually go over a little bit. At this stage, it's probably okay to hold your pencil by the end like this, but kind of going up and going around and cleaning up a lot of the marks, the underdrawing marks, to refine the shapes. This is the part of the drawing where a lot of people start to have fun, but it's a part of it that doesn't really come for a while. You have to work your way up to it. So when you look back at the video, um, don't fast forward to the section where I'm starting to refine it. Now remember the buildup that had to come to get to this point.
But even though I'm in a refinement stage and I'm looking a little bit at, at smaller shapes, that doesn't mean that I'm looking at those smaller shapes in any different way. I'm still looking and thinking about direction, about alignment. How does one shape change direction in relation to another? Where do the divisions come in? The um, part that's probably going to drive some of you nuts with the homework is that if you have the pepper there and you cut the pepper in half, you've got all those little seeds. You gotta draw all the seeds that are there. So. Can we take them out? <laughs> you could take a few out, but leave some of them in. And what I would say is don't draw the seeds like this. I don't know, if you have a pepper that has seeds that, that look like that, then you might not want to eat the pepper. Really look care, but again, the seeds are a small shape, so it's something you're not really gonna uh, look at really closely until much later in the drawing anyway. So, and like I say, I'm not concerned for this drawing about the line weight variation. The next project we do, uh, we'll get into that. Just make sure your lines are very clear, the shapes are very clear and readable. Because the main objective is getting the proportions, the perspective, and the shapes accurate. So one can almost argue that what I have right now in this area is a really worked up, analyzed underdrawing. I'm going back over to make it uh, refined and clear. And like right in this area, I really want to make sure it's clear that this back edge, which is the back of the, um, uh, the top of the carton, is going behind this peak that's coming up right here. So here's the high peak in the inside of the carton. And here's the line behind, it's the top of the carton, it's leaning back behind it. And at this stage, sometimes, like I was saying earlier, you might find, even though you think everything's measured out, you start to put things together and then you realize, oh, well, that overlap's not working. Well, it's not working maybe because of a mismeasurement. So, like I said earlier, if you find yourself in that situation, just stop and readjust your measurement and then go back to your refinement. drawing a little bit faster than I normally would. I was doing this for myself, which I really, like I say, I don't draw egg cartons and bell peppers for my, you know, I'm drawing whatever I want, but um, if I was doing this for myself, I would be going a little bit slower. I'm kind of going faster because we're in a classroom situation and I don't want to take up the whole class time. But strategically, I wouldn't be doing anything different. I still would be approaching prob uh, problem solving in the same way. I just would be doing it at a much uh, slower pace at this stage. Because when I'm measuring, if I work a little bit slower and I take my time with all my measurements, then I avoid running into any potential problems and miss uh, calculations in a, in a measurement.
curve on this corner, but first I want to make sure these two angles are clearly drawn in. Then I can get a curve that comes in and round it off later. Here is that overlap of the back top of that carton. There's the pepper that's coming in. Go in and erase some of the construction lines. And if you're really um, nitpicky about getting uh, your hands dirty, you can always put like a, a paper towel down or you can even take an extra measuring stick and rest your hand against it like that when you draw. That way it keeps your hand off of the paper. Um, like I say, for this first drawing, I don't care if you end up with a little bit, if a little bit of the underdrawing is showing through as long as the shapes are accurate and the measurements are believable and the space is believable. That's the main objective. So. Later on in, 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 the, in the term, you know, I want things to be a little bit cleaner, but right now I just want you to focus on the main objective. So now that I have the structure of this pepper down, I have a reference to go over and now make these curves accurate. I can tell this curve comes up and then over, so I can just lightly erase that, maintain the direction, and just round off where that curve's coming in. Finish up this pepper and then I'll let you guys uh, get your drawings started here in a minute. And another thing, I think I might have mentioned this to a few people before, but don't feel the obligation to put every single thing in the drawing. In other words, like I was saying last class, you're drawing something three-dimensional and you're translating it two-dimensionally. So I don't need to put every tiny little shape in. What I need to put in are the most important ones that show me what's happening with the form. So every little twist and little turn, a little subtle textural element here in the, say, the area of the stem, it isn't necessary that I put every one of them in. What's important is that I put in shapes that show me how the structure is working. So in relation to when you have that um, pepper cut open, you know, the main objective should be, before you worry about every tiny little seed, should be that you, what you draw shows how the structure of the inside of that pepper works, the inside of the area that you sliced. Like right now, I can see these little highlights coming in here, but I'm not dealing with light and shadow. I'm just dealing with lines, so I can edit those out. I use them as a guide to get my shape started, but they don't necessarily need to be in the finished linear drawing. This was a full 
value light and shadow drawing it to be a different issue, but it's not. So I'm very carefully looking at the overlaps. And kind of like with portraits, every bell pepper is different. So that's why I'm being very careful as I go around and refine all these sections. I don't want to just make it overly generalized. Goes over, and it projects down. Probably just uh, leave it there. Are there any um, questions about anything? Because essentially, this is your homework assignment. This is the uh, the objective for your homework assignment. No. Okay.